Okay, well, welcome everyone. Welcome this morning to our service. And if you're joining us online, thank you for tuning in and watching. And uh, we're just so uh, privileged to be able to meet together. You know, the Bible tells us to to come together as believers. Uh, just make known our heart and just honor Him with with just every part of our being. And so that's what we want to do. And uh, Oh, I see this mic is making noise. Okay. So anyhow, praise God. Let's just open in a word of prayer, and then I'm going to invite Dallas to lead us into time of worship. Father, we just thank you and praise you for this day. Lord, I thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the things that you have created, Father. And I thank you that our life is in you. We put our hope and our trust and our confidence in you, Father God. And so we come together to praise and to worship you and to give you first place in our lives, Lord. Father, we're not moved by the things around us that are happening. We are only moved by your promises in your word, Father. And so we give you praise today in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Dallas, why don't you lead us in worship? Amen, amen. Well, good morning, everybody. So good to see you. Um, if I'm loud in some way, I will just adjust. But I'm not turning anything up or down anymore. I think it will work. But uh, anyways, it's so good to be with you today. And those of you online, uh, you know, we don't have to be in the same room to worship. And we don't actually have to be sitting beside each other to praise and clap and sing and lift our hands and give God glory. So just encourage you with that today, just to give God your praise wherever you're at. And for those of you with me today, just worship in whatever way you feel comfortable. Here we go. You create Good evening.
till I overflow And Lord, I want more Come on, reach down your hands Reach down your hands from heaven Pour me closer than ever before And Lord, I want more Come on, pour out your love Pour out your love from heaven Till I overflow Lord, I want more Won't you sing to him, reach down Reach down your hands from heaven Pull me closer than ever before up our hands to you today and we just invite the Holy Spirit to come and just be a part of our worship. I'm reaching for you. I'm singing to you. I'm lifting my hands to praise you. I'm lifting my voice to thank you. I'm reaching for you. Jesus, I need you. I'm giving my heart to know you. I'm living my life to serve you. I'm reaching for you. Amen. We just reach for him. Amen. We've been singing or we've been learning, I guess, in our services about the fruits of the spirit and I heard this song about a year ago and it basically just sings those words about the fruits of the spirit but I just encourage you to listen to them and listen to what the song's actually asking for it's a it's a request to the Lord and to the Holy Spirit just to give us those gifts amen do you give me love joy peace patience and faithfulness your goodness is in our self-control, kindness and gentleness. Oh, you give your heart to me. You give your heart to me, Lord. Oh, you give your heart to me you give your heart to me Lord oh you give your heart to me joy peace patience and faithfulness your goodness is in now Self-control, kindness and gentleness Will you give your heart to me? You give your heart to me, Lord And you give your heart to me
Close enough to feel your touch I'm in between your love and arms Worship is my heart's response You're all I want You're all I Close enough, close enough to see your face. I'm caught in your eyes, your gaze. I can hear the sound of heaven. You call my name, you call my Call my name, call my name. So I draw close again and give you all I am to bring you praise, to bless your holy name. Cause there is awe and wonder in the love of your Close enough to hear. Close enough to hear you speak. Abide with me in fields of grace. Your presence, Lord, is all I see. You're all I want. You're all I want. You're all I want. All I want So I draw close again And give you all I am To bring you praise To bless your holy name Cause there is awe and wonder In the love of your embrace Oh, oh, oh around us, amen. And I can feel it, and deep within my soul, I can see it, your glory all around. And faith is rising, my heart will give you praise, Lord. Your presence is my all, yeah, and I can feel it and deep within my soul, and I can see it, your glory all around. And faith is rising, my heart will give you praise, Lord. Your presence is my all, so I draw close again and give you all I am to bring you praise, to bless your holy name. Cause there is awe and wonder in the love of your embrace. Oh, oh, oh. Your embrace, Lord. So I draw close again and give you all I am to bring you praise, to bless your holy name. 
Cause there is awe and wonder in the love of your embrace. Oh, 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 oh. My chains are gone and I've been set free and my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a His mercy reigns and unending love, amazing grace. Let's just sing that one last time all together. My chains are gone, amen. We sing that over our circumstances today. We sing that over whatever we're going through, that our chains are gone. You don't have to sing it necessarily with a loud voice. You can sing it with a loud heart, amen. And let's just praise him and just lift up our, our needs and our, our desires to the Lord. My chains are gone And I've been set free God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, in His mercy Sing that last line again. Unending love, amazing grace, unending love, amazing. Let's just continue to worship just for a minute. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, mighty God. We worship your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we worship you. We give you honor. Hallelujah, oh hallelujah, Lord. Amazing grace. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your amazing grace, Lord. And Father, I thank you that we can come into your presence and when we gather together and even those that are watching online, Lord, I know that our hearts are united. And Father, there's no time or distance in the spirit realm. And so, as believers, we unite our hearts together. And Father, I thank you that you have us in the palm of your hand. You have us in that safe place, Father. And we give you honor. We give you praise for that, Lord, today. 
Lord, we thank you that you care about us so much. You care about us as your children, as as individuals within your family, Lord. We thank you that you care about the body of Christ. You care about all of us. And Father, you care about our world too, Lord. The Bible says that you're willing that none would perish, that no one would go through their life without coming to know Jesus. And so we pray for our nation today, Father. We pray for our country, Canada. We pray for our province and for our city, Lord. We pray for all those that are making decisions that affect all of our lives right now, Father. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would move powerfully. Your word says that in the last days, your spirit will be poured out in a powerful way on all flesh, and that includes your children, but it includes those who don't even have a relationship with you yet, Father God. But we pray for them. Father, I pray that every person in this nation would have an encounter with Jesus, would come to know Jesus. Father, we stand in agreement. We stand on Your Word and on Your promises for us, Lord. We declare the victory, Father. Continue to declare victory in the health realm, Lord. That this virus would be defeated and that health and strength and healing would be restored to every part of our society and every every person lord we just agree together for that in jesus name and father we pray for our economy too that it would that it would be restored and healed and recover from this in jesus name lord as believers we know that there is power when we pray in agreement and so those of us are here today and those of us that are that are watching online, those of we just come in agreement as believers. If any two shall agree is touching anything, it shall be done. Father, we thank you for that promise in your word. And so we pray, we agree, we declare that your will, your purpose, your plan would be done in this nation, in this city, and in our lives. Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, thank you. Thank you for worshiping. And uh, if you were standing, you may be seated. Although maybe I should keep you standing for a second. We're going to do our monthly confession now. I'm going to take the opportunity for that. So if you have your confession, if you picked it up on the way in, uh, I don't know it. Uh, sorry. Um, praise God. If you need it, we can get it, Donnie. But okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Uh, so we're going to do the confession. Like I say, if you brought it uh, with you on the, <laughs> we picked it up on the way in or whatever, let's, uh, let's say it together. And uh, I am God's child because of what Jesus did for me. As his child, I have a special place within the family of God. With Holy Spirit working in me, I bear good fruit, and everything I do brings glory to God. And now this is the last Sunday of July, so I don't know. That's a pretty good confession. We'll see if I if I change it for August or not. But anyhow, praise God. You may be seated. Thank you again for those that are watching online. I just want to welcome you and uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I I know it's a little different because uh, for a while there we were posting always on Sunday mornings and uh, now that we've gone to uh, live services, then it's uh, it's not as easy to to get it up first thing on a Sunday morning. But please watch for it and thank you for watching and what we're doing. So uh, it's all good. We're just we're just kind of going with going with the flow here. Whatever the whatever we can do in order to uh, be able to accommodate the in person and online services, uh, we want to be able to do that. We want to continue. We know I I've had many. Many people uh, contact us and say how much they appreciated the online services. So 
I like seeing faces. I like seeing your faces, here, those of you that are here today. And that's, it's uh, way more fun. Uh, preaching to a camera is pretty different. And so, but that's okay. We, God is good. And we just, we'll go with whatever we need to in order to make it all work. So, uh, we're going to go into God's word now. And, uh, a few, uh, you know that for the last few weeks we've been uh, preaching and teaching uh, out of uh, a passage in Galatians on the fruit of the Spirit. And I was talking to Dallas this week as we were uh, anticipating kind of wrapping up that series. It was the last Sunday in July. And, and uh, Dallas said he had something that God had put in his heart a while back about the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, so I said to him, well, would, it, would you like to share this? And uh, so he said, sure, I think I could be ready to share. So are we losing it here? Yeah. Is it this cord, do you think? Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Apologize for if things are cutting in and out. Anyhow, I'm going to take the opportunity to introduce my son to you. Dallas Wright is our worship leader, and he is going to come and just bring what God's put on his heart today in terms of the word. So thank you, Dallas. Thank you for being willing to share, and thank you for also leading us in worship and all the things that you do to help out. Praise God. So. Okay. okay, I'm going to use this because that one's being a little funny. Well, good morning, everybody. It's been a while since, uh, since I've shared anything. Probably back in the living room at my parents' place was the last time I actually shared something on our online services or or for a Sunday when we were doing those kind of roundtable discussions. But, um, yeah, it was funny. I, I had remembered, like, and I had to look it up. This was eight years ago. I had shared a message while my parents were away one Sunday. And uh, I had talked about, you know, how much God loves us. And I thought I had this whole message that was on this particular topic. And I would just, like, tweak it a little bit. And then when I actually found my notes, it was, like, literally one point that was what I wanted to talk about today. So this is all kind of fresh stuff. But, um, but definitely ties in what we've been chatting about the last couple of weeks. And obviously, it's you know there's nine fruits of the Spirit. So this is, this is like 10, 10 weeks now that we've been chatting about this. So this goes all the way back to potentially the beginning of June. And I'm going to circle back today, and we're going to go back to the first fruit of the Spirit that we talked about, which was love. Um, and so in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, that was a verse that we've read through a whole bunch uh, over this past while. But, uh, but just to share it again, so in case we didn't forget, um, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And so I'm going to talk about that first fruit again today and try to tie it in a little bit to maybe what's going on in the world and maybe as an encouragement to all of us on how we can be encouraged during these kind of uncertain times and also how we can be an encouragement to others as we're out and about trying to be a light in our world. Amen. So I'm just going to pray before we begin. Um, Dearly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Thank you for um, just giving me uh, something that the Holy Spirit has placed in my heart to share. And Lord, I just ask that you would uh, use my words and I ask that you would just guide me and bring to remembrance different examples and things that I can use to encourage and to be an uplifter today. Lord, I thank you for each and every one of us who's here that our hearts would be open, we'd be ready to receive something and learn something and to grow and, and just develop our relationship with you that much more. So we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So what I'm going to talk about today is not super complicated, but I think that's why it's hard. Because we like to overcomplicate things as human beings. We like to take simple things and we have to add stuff and tweak it and, you know, we get bored. And so sometimes we have to go back to just the very basics of what did God ask us to do? What did Jesus ask us to do? I think it's very appropriate to say that our world is hurting right now whether that might be people recovering from the pandemic via health, um, you know, mental illness challenges, financial challenges, people dealing with the realities of social injustice and the fact that racism hasn't gone away and that we're realizing it still needs to be dealt with, things like that. You know, increased feelings of loneliness from working from home, depression and anxiety. These are all things that have kind of been, I guess, highlighted in the last four or five months. But I think it's important to remind ourselves that the world has always been full of hurting people. And when Jesus walked on the earth, he left us with two pretty simple commandments in Matthew 22, verses 37 to 39. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. That was the first and greatest commandment that he gave us. And this was at a time where obviously we had the Ten Commandments from the Old Testament. 
But this was Jesus kind of responding to the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were trying to trick him. You know, they were always trying to ask him questions and see if they could stump him. And so this was his response, that that was the first and greatest commandment. But the second was just as important, and that was to love your neighbor as yourself. So today I want to focus on that second commandment and look at how the Holy Spirit makes this possible. And I truly believe that it's only through the Holy Spirit that that's possible. If you look at the context of the word love in that scripture. So we have to clarify what we're even talking about when we say love. The reason I say that is because we use the word love very casually in English language. Man, I, I love that guitar. I love your hairdo. I love those shoes. I love my wife. I love God. We use the same word to describe things that have absolutely no equal level in terms of priority in our lives, or at least they shouldn't. My love for God should not be the same as my love for my sneakers. My love for my wife should not be the same as my love for golf. Those two things shouldn't be on the same level, but the English language is limited in that we only really have one word to use for that versus the way that the Bible was originally written in Greek. The Greek language is very rich in terms of its amount of words, and the reason was they didn't have one word that had multiple definitions. They had one word for each definition. So therefore, when you read the Bible, we see love in the English language, but that means something, I think it's seven different ways in Greek, depending on which word they use. And so I think it's important for us to know what is God actually talking about? What type of love are we talking about? So when I looked, I did a quick search, and I looked up how many languages the Bible was translated into. It was over 1,500 languages, so from Greek to whatever 1,500 languages. The problem is with English is that we have approximately 273,000 words in our language, and we use only about 171,000. In comparison, it's estimated that the uh, Greek language has close to 5 million words and almost 70 million derivatives of all those words. So how could we possibly take a specific word that was used in the Bible and really capture the meaning in English because we have one half a percent of a half a percent of the amount of words to describe that same thing. And in case in point, the definition for love in the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary has like 18 different definitions. It, you know, the strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties. So that could be like friendship or a, a parent to a child. Attraction based on sexual desire, affection and tenderness by lovers. Affection based on admiration, benevolence, or common interest, an assurance of affection, warm attachment, enthusiasm, or devotion. And there was a whole bunch more that I didn't list. So when, when we use the word love in English, we're not really capturing like a specific thing. We're, we're using it because that's all we have. But when you, look at, uh, when you look at the Greek language and you break down the different types, it helps us really capture what is Paul talking about in Galatians 5, 22, when he says that the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love. What kind of love is he talking about? Is he talking about some sort of infatuation or desire or sexual love for another human being? No, he's not. Is he talking about like the mother-father love? No, he's not. But we, we can't necessarily pull that out all the time without going a little bit deeper. So it's slightly, I'm going to go somewhere quickly so we can talk a little bit. But just to go through some things, in Greek, there was six different definitions I found. So eros is kind of more of a sexual or an intimate type of love. But the Greeks actually considered that dangerous because that type of love inhibited a lack of control or a loss of control. Now, our society likes that kind of love. I want to be madly in love. I fell madly in love. That's what we see in movies. That's what we see in TV shows. But the Greek language was actually fearful of using that word because it showed that you lost control of yourself and you, you basically gave in to desire without conscious thought. But our society likes that kind of love, that kind of passionate love. But that's not actually what Paul wants us to strive for. There's also one philia. And I don't know if I'm saying these right. I'm not a Greek scholar. I'm not a linguist. If you're watching today, please don't comment that I can't pronounce the words. I'm just doing my best. But philia is more of a friendship or a camaraderie, something you'd get from like, you know, brothers in arms, something like that. Uh, this one is like ludus or ludus uh, is a playful love, like teasing or flirting or laughing with a friend. Then we have agape love, which is a love for everyone or a selfless kind of love. Uh, there was one pragma, which is long-standing love. Think of like an elderly couple. Maybe they're not, you know, as hot and tight as they used to be back in the day, but they love each other with like a deepness that only comes from long time being together. And then there was philosia or, philatia in, uh, or a love of self. 
And this had two types. There was narcissism, which was the negative side of that, where you just love yourself so much. You're so egotistical about it. And then there was another type of love, which was more so like self-worth, which that one is a more positive type of self-love. And so gi giving, giving, or given that we have all these different types, it's important to remember that everything's in context. And I have a funny story. When I was in college, I had a guy I played basketball with at uh, Concordia. His name was Dave. And we played together in my last year. And uh, for those of you who have younger teenage kids or kids our age, whatever, they have all these little acronyms they use when they're texting each other. So like LOL and BRB and whatever. And LOL is supposed to stand for laugh out loud. And my friend, his mom didn't realize that that's what it stood for. She thought it stood for lots of love. So she was using it in completely inappropriate and in insensitive times where it would be like, hey, we'll meet you at the funeral, LOL. And he's like, what? And Or it'd be like, hey, I know you just finished your game. I, I, rules are super icy, drive safe, LOL. So he's thinking, what? Laugh out loud, mom. Like, that's not very nice. And so finally he had to explain, mom, it means laugh out loud, not lots of love. And so she'd been using it for all her friends in the wrong context, thinking it meant one thing and it meant something completely different. And it was, you know, it was a great example, or at least a funny example to me, of how we can sometimes misinterpret what's being said. Now... Having said that, let's take a look at a few verses in the Bible that we're, we're familiar with to just define what kind of love does the Bible primarily talk about. So starting with Galatians, we've been there for 10 weeks now, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love. That love, when you translate it, is going to be agape. Now, as Christians, we also sometimes call that unconditional love, but the root of it is a selfless type of love. It's a love that is not focused on me, it's not focused on what I want, it's not focused on how I feel, it's focused on selfless love, loving someone else for them, to be better for them, to be kinder to them. And unconditional love, as we like to use with, with our faith, is that God loved us with that type of love, an unconditional selfless love. If God loved us with more of a Colossia or Felicia self-love, self he would have been like, well, hey, you guys done messed up. Have fun. Like, I'm not going to the cross for you. I gave you a chance. Adam and Eve messed up if it was all about self. Or if it was just like a brotherly love thing, it would have been like, right on. Hey, Peter, will you die with me? And we know Peter denied Christ three times the day before he died, so that wouldn't have really worked. So camaraderie wouldn't have been the best, right? There's no passionate love. Like, man, I just love human beings in a really inappropriate way, so I'm going to die on the cross. No, that that's not what it was. And Jesus was only ministering for about three years so it couldn't have been some long-standing love now maybe if you think of the context of god's the creator so he's been here forever and he created us for relationships so in that context yes it could have been longer but the word in the bible that's used and i'm going to point it out over and over again is agape another verse that we're all familiar with would be john 3 16 for this is how god loved the world i'm reading from the nlt sorry i don't know yeah, that's one. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That word loved is, I had to look it up. It's like agapacin, which is an active version of agape. So the root word of that falls back to agapeo or agape. So it's again, it's that love for others, for everyone, not selfful, but selfless. 1 John 4, 7, and 8. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love, does not know God, for God is love. Every single time in that verse, it's agape we're talking about there. So God is that kind of love. He is that kind of love. He's not eros. He's not physical and sensual and that's not what God is. He's the love of everyone. He's the love for all of us. He's the selfless kind of love. And there's nothing wrong with those other types of love in the proper context and maybe in the proper levels. But we're talking today about how can we be a light to those around us? How can we truly love the way that God asked us to? And that's by getting our eyes set on the agape kind of love. 1 Corinthians 13. We all know this verse. You know that they're read during weddings and things like that. But if you go through it, every single time love is referenced in that section, uh, there's 13 scriptures there, so uh, chapter 13, 1 to 13, every single time, it's some version of agape. So in verses 1 to 3, when we're going through that, 
when he's talking about if I could speak all the languages of earth uh, and and angels but didn't love, I would only be a noising, gong, or clanging symbol. That that love is agape again. And when you get into verses 4 to 8 where it's talking about love is patient, love is kind, every time those are the agape versions of love. And what I want to parallel today is that the Holy Spirit, the fruit of it, the first one is love. And if love is patient, love is kind, love is all of these different things. If God is love, then to truly love the way God wants, I actually have to have the Holy Spirit. If I don't have the Holy Spirit, I can only imitate agape love. But I most likely will fall into one of those other five types, which becomes more about me than it does become about the other person. Or maybe it's not, I'm not able to show, you know, a long-standing love with everyone because it takes a long time to build those relationships. So I'm limited sometimes in doing those other five if I don't have the Holy Spirit as a part of my life. In Matthew, well, sorry, and then at the end of that section, verse 13, where, where um, Paul is saying that uh, now these things remain, hope, faith, and love, but the greatest of these is love. One more there. One more. One more click for everybody. So faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. I saw an illustration one time where Joyce Meyer, she had, she had a bunch of books leaning over, and she had a one that she had like a little stand that said love. And so all these books were leaning, and she had read this scripture, and she had read this passage, and she said at the end of it, Paul gives us the key, is that there's always going to be faith, there's always going to be hope, there's always going to be love, but the greatest of these is love. And so she pulled, that, she pulled her little ornament out, and all the books fell over. If we don't start with love, if we don't start with the first fruit of the Spirit, we can't do all these different things we can try and we can stress ourselves out trying to love everyone, but people are going to get on your nerves. You're going to have different opinions. Our human nature is that we're probably going to disagree. And I just truly believe that the only way that I can disagree with you agreeably and still love you through it is if I have the Holy Spirit operating in my life. If I actually invite the Holy Spirit to, to give me little prompts to say, okay, calm down, calm down. Think about their story. Where are they coming from? What are they going through? Don't take this personally. God loves them too. That doesn't just come up in your mind all by itself because Satan's on the other side going, this person's mean, this person's a jerk, yell at this guy, man, he's so lazy. Why won't my husband do the dishes? Why won't he do the laundry? I'm talking about myself here, people. All right, so, you know, that could very well happen for a spouse. That could very well happen for a friend. Brothers and sisters, you know, getting in fights, things like that, squabbles. I believe that the Holy Spirit's the only way that we can kind of calm ourselves down and realize that God wants us to love everyone. He's instructed us to love our enemies. And he's instructed us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Matthew 22, 37, 39. That's where I'm reading from. I'm just going to read that section again. Jesus replied, this is to the Pharisees, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. In that phrase, the words like love your are grouped together in the Greek. And it's like agape, agape seus or something. I can't say it, but. It's an active form of agape love. So again, we're coming back to that. So here's my parallel for you. If I don't have the Holy Spirit, I can't have the fruit of the Spirit. Is that fair? Like if I don't have gas in my car, I don't go anywhere. That kind of thing. So I have to have the Holy Spirit to have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit gives me the agape kind of love. And that's the kind of love that God is. That's the kind of love that is patient, kind, that allows me to love my neighbor as myself. And so that's how come the Holy Spirit is so key. And so we've been talking about this now for a number of weeks. This is going on nine, ten weeks. But I think it is so important that we have discussed these things and that we've really jumped into this section of Scripture because it is so important. And love is kind of that foundational building block that we start with. So just to finish off our time today, I'm not going to talk too, too much more, but I truly believe that the Holy Spirit is our only way to have that type of agape love. While researching those different types of the Greek versions of the words, the same article I was reading that gave me those definitions had a little bit of a footnote. And it mentioned that there's growing evidence that the agape, or the agape kind of love, is in dangerous decline in many countries. And it even said empathy levels in the U.S. have declined sharply over the past 40 years with the steepest fall occurring in the past decade. We urgently need to revive our capacity to care about strangers. And I don't think anything happening in the U.S. is different than what's happening in Canada. We're not just like, oh, the nice Canadians, we don't get bitter and sour. We do, okay? So it, this applies to us as well. So our level to empathize with people is dropping 
it's dropped drastically. And I see this firsthand in the place that I work. The people I work with, I work, I work for the government, and we're working for Service Canada. But you would be surprised at how many people want to be served at Service Canada. No, thank you. Your job is to serve on that person. Obviously, you don't have to take like disrespect and verbal abuse or something like that. But you need to kind of submit yourself to serve. Because we're dealing with people in very critical times of their lives. I'm involved with a training group right now. You would be surprised at how many people are so sour after 20, 30 years of working for the government to serve. All we're asking them to do is try to think service first. But they can't because they're bitter. They're sour. They've, they've, they're jaded. And I don't blame them because without the Holy Spirit, I don't think you can actually get through a full life and continue to love others the way that God wants us to do. I think the world is a tough place. And for those of you here and those of us watching online, you've probably gone through some real crappy stuff, if I can say that, and some things that no one would wish on anyone else. And I just want to tell you that that's not your fault, but I understand if you would be upset. I understand if you would be jaded. I understand if you wouldn't be able to just kind of turn the other cheek, as the Bible says. But I do believe that if we accept the Holy Spirit into our lives as a guide and a helper, that we actually can get through those situations. And at the end of the day, you know, unforgiveness, things like that, those are cages to ourselves more than the other person. Like I heard a, an analogy that uh, not forgiving someone and showing love is like you building a jail cell for them and then you have to watch the door the whole time. But the problem is that there's nothing behind it. So then when you see them walk around and go live their life, you get real ticked off because they're not staying in your cage. That's because it, they don't even realize what, what your problem is. You know, it's more of a hindrance to us. And so showing love and walking, and these are not easy things. I mean, I might be pushing some buttons here, but it's true, right? Like these are hard things for us to deal with as just natural beings. But we're not just natural beings. We are children of God, and God has given us the Holy Spirit to encourage us and to help us to love in that way. So I, I don't... I'm not, I don't know the statistics behind this article. It's just an article I read, but I do agree. I, I, I've seen it, you know, I, in my personal experience. People are more testy. They're more saucy. They're a little bit more, you know, I just don't get that. But then again, when I think about it, I say, oh, I actually kind of do get that. Because if you were going through life with no hope of a better future, like you didn't think things would ever get better, why would you, why would you care what anyone else thought? You would just be out to get yours. YOLO, you know, only live life once, do what I want, you know. I heard it said that like you only live life once that phrase or like fear of missing out is the anthem cry for the lazy and uh, something else. And it was like, yes, amen, sister. It was the lady who was saying it. And it's like, that's so true. It's like an anthem for like, I'm not actually going to like do my do the best I can. I'm just going to do whatever I want. So if you like do me wrong, I'm just going to do you wrong back because that's what I feel like versus doing the right thing. And it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or you're a different rela religion or anything like that. These principles and morals are taught in all kinds of walks of life. But I just truly believe that you can't actually live that out without the Holy Spirit. I want to just share a, a quick story and then I'll, I'll be closing here. But there's a, a gentleman, his name's Bill Curry. I heard an audio by him. He used to be a, uh, the center, so the guy who snaps the ball to the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers in uh, 1965 and 66, which was during a seven-year period where the uh, Green Bay Packers won seven Super Bowls in, in that seven-year period, so, or sorry, five in the seven years. So arguably the greatest team of all time, they named the Super Bowl trophy after their coach, Vince Lombardi, and this guy was the center for that team. He was, he, you know, he was telling some stories, and so he, was, he also coached in the NCAA for football for 35 years. And anyways, I heard an audio for him. He was talking about some things and he was actually talking about some of the same issues we're going through today with some of the prejudices, some of the inequalities, some of the things with race. And he, he had some very great examples of stories from back in the 50s and when, when this stuff was a bit more everywhere as opposed to maybe in certain areas. And he had some amazing stories to share. And one of the things that he said was, you know, people who are crying out for, people who feel like they're discriminated against, whether that might be women, people of minority groups, people of color, you know, LGBT communities, they're not looking for you to tolerate them. They want love. They want to be loved. And you don't have to agree with everything that they want or you don't have to understand it even. But that's not a reason not to love them. We, they don't just want us to tolerate what they like and just not talk about it. They actually want people to love them. That's probably why they're hurting so much is because They've been ostracized. They've been cast down by their family. And what better way than Christians to say, 
come one, come all, and legitimately mean that. And to say, you can come as you are. You can come tatted up. You can come in cussing and swearing. This is where you need to be. So please come, and, and I'm going to rely on the Holy Spirit to give me grace to be gracious with you. And that's not easy, and that is not something that happens in business. That's not something that happens in families. That's not something that happens in schools. Even though we say it should, even though companies put that stuff on their company logos, it's not always going to happen because people are people. But I believe that with the Holy Spirit, we can actually be that group that God gives us grace to deal with our feelings so we can be gracious to somebody else. Regardless of what, the, what we think or what the Bible says, we still start with love. And then we let the Holy Spirit change them, not us change them. And so I don't think that we're going to break down the barriers of prejudice and race and things like that by just trying our best and using, you know, Eros love, just that kind of thing. It's got to be that agape type of love. And I believe we need the Holy Spirit to do that. I just want to go back and finish with this today. At the end of that verse, it said, commandment number two was to love your neighbor as yourself. And that last line, I think, is the most important part of understanding why is our relationship with Jesus Christ so important. It's because he's commanded us to love others as we love ourselves. Now, again, this isn't the, the narcissistic kind of love. This is the self-worth kind of love that you can only get, I believe, by knowing that your Heavenly Father loved you first. By knowing that I am so messed up and screwed up and I've made so many mistakes and I've made so many faults, but that the God who created me is gracious and loves me all the same. When you realize that for yourself first, then that verse makes sense. But if you hate yourself, if you don't have that kind of self-love, or you've never experienced the loving arms of Jesus Christ in your life, when it says love your neighbor as yourself, you're going to treat your neighbor as you're treating yourself. You're going to be negative to them. That's why we say hurting people hurt people. It's because it's inevitable that what's in you will come out. And so as I transition today to finish, I just want to encourage us all that we in this room know this, but there's people watching online who maybe you don't know this. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and so you don't feel that kind of worth or love for yourself first. And so when I'm talking about loving others, you're saying, I can't. I can't, I can't love others. I'm hurting. And I say, I, I, I agree. And I don't know what you're going through, but I don't have to know the extent of what you're going through to know that Jesus still loves you that Jesus is still the name above all names, that Jesus died for whatever you're going through, sins, maybe a disease, sickness, financial problems. He died for all of it to give you a hope and a future and to then, when you accept that, then accept the Holy Spirit so you can have all those fruits we've been talking about, love, joy, peace, patience, all those different things come, but we start with a relationship with Jesus Christ first. We come where we're at because he loves us and he's gracious with us and he cares for us. And I don't want to go on too, too much more on that today, but I just encourage you. Um, I don't know if Pastor Keith wants to do it, but for those of you who are here, if you need to kind of rejig things for yourself and get back to the foundation that Jesus loves me so much, given all my failures and all my problems and all my mistakes, that then I need to take that type of love that I feel for me, for my Heavenly Father, and share that with someone else. And even if they don't want to take it from you, it does say in the Bible that blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. So my job is to love on them, not to expect love. Catch what I'm saying? To love on them. I'm going to love on them. And if they respond, great. That's a bonus. I, you know, that feels nice. But when they don't, I've now fulfilled the commandment to love my neighbor as myself. I've also fulfilled the blessings of potentially being persecuted for God's name or for Jesus' name's sake. And the, the interesting thing about it is you don't have to go around with a big billboard on your head saying, I love you only because Jesus told me to. I love you only because the Bible said so. Like, don't do that, of course, right? But we know on the inside. And I don't know how many times that I've experienced it with my family, with my parents, where we'll be out somewhere as a kid growing up and something would happen. We would interact with a server. We would interact with someone who worked at a store. And they would ask us, are you guys Christians? And it would be such a good feeling to be able to say yes. Versus, you're the worst person in the store. You're cussing out the sales clerk. You're so upset that they won't give you your money back. And then they ask, are you a Christian? And you have to say, yes. They should know us by our love. But it's not Eros love. It's not, you know, brotherly 
you know, fist bumping love. It's not necessarily love like an older elderly couple. It's not love for self. It's agape love, unconditional selfless love. And I just want to encourage you with that today as we go out there that you're loved. Jesus loves you. And because Jesus loves you and we accept him into our hearts, we have access to the Holy Spirit as a guide. And with that comes the fruits of the Spirit that we've talked about. And the first one being love, agape love, which is God's kind of love, which is the kind of love I believe that changes the world, which is the kind of love that heals marriages. It's the kind of love that brings families back together. When someone's done you so, so, so wrong and they, they, they turn around to look at you like the prodigal son and, and you come running with open arms. That's not easy, and I don't expect you to be able to do that without the Holy Spirit. So my encouragement is let's all invite the Holy Spirit to be a bit more a part of our daily lives. Amen. I'm just going to pray as we close. I know Pastor Keith wanted to do communion today, but I'll just finish my part with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Thank you so much for just loving us, for being a part of our lives, for giving us the Holy Spirit that brings about all of those wonderful fruits of the Spirit, including love. Lord, I ask that each and every one of us who's here today and watching online would have a, a deeper sense and a deeper revelation of how much Jesus loves us, how much you love us, God, and that you sent your son to die for us so that we could be back in a relationship with you. And for those people who haven't maybe ever accepted you, Lord, I just ask that right now, as they're sitting at home, that they would just say in their hearts, you know, Jesus, I repent of my sins, and I accept you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. And Lord, when they do that, they accept all the blessings and all the forgiveness and all the, all the goodness that Jesus died on the cross for so that we could have a wonderful future. And once we've made that decision, Lord, we then accept the Holy Spirit and all of those tools and power and things that can come up on the inside of us to help us navigate in this world. Lord, bless us all as we go and help us to all think that we're world changers. Help us all to look at the world in such a way that we know we can help and change our circumstances through that agape kind of love, whether that be at home, whether that be at our workplace, at our schools, in our politics, it doesn't matter, Father God. Agape love is going to be the, the, the love that conquers all. And we just ask that we would all be reminded of the grace you've given us so that we can be gracious to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Dallas, and uh, just want to uh, again say for those of you that are watching online, if you uh, would like to know more, if you'd like to know more about this relationship with Jesus, please contact us, email, or be in touch with the church office there. The phone number's on the website and stuff, and I, I liked what Dallas said just now. He said this, he said um, that without the Holy Spirit, we can only imitate, and that applies to all of us, right? Without the power of the Holy Spirit operating in our lives, we can only, we can only imitate the true love. But when Jesus comes into our lives, when we accept him, as, as Dallas talked about, when we accept and have that personal relationship with Jesus, then the power of the Holy Spirit comes in and, and, and Holy Spirit empowers us to be the kind of loving people that he always wanted us to be and that we can be with his power working in our lives. So thank you I'm, for the people watching online. I just want to thank you again for joining us today. And uh, please be in touch. And uh, uh, thank you for those of you that have been sending your uh, giving in online with the online options. Thank you so much for that. It's a blessing. It's a, this is a tough time. It's, it's kind of strange. It almost feels like we're doing two, we have two church congregations. There are those that are showing up, and, and then there are those that are watching online. But you know what? We love you, and I just want to thank you for uh, joining in today and for watching online. And please take advantage of all of the resources that are available through our website and the, through the posts that we put on Facebook and stuff. So thank you so much for joining us today.